Hello, welcome to Writing Four. I see some familiar faces and some new faces. Good. So, uh, because we do have some new classmates, uh, I will go through the whole introduction just like new. So, um, today I'll show you what we're going to be doing this semester. Um, guide you through the Moodle web page so you know what resources you have. Uh, and then um, I'm going to deal with some housework and then we'll jump right into the first unit. So uh, if you need to contact me, that is my email. This semester we also have a teaching assistant. Not here yet. Uh, when she gets here, I will introduce you. If for some reason you need to join the team's class, uh, but the school has not yet added you, you can add yourself using this code. OK, next is the syllabus. Um, as you can see, I have isolated the schedule to a different file. So um, for the syllabus part, let's just take a look at. Where is it? Let's just take a look at the grading percentages. There will be one midterm exam. 20 points. Uh, this semester you have to write two essays, an argument essay and a research essay. Each are worth 30 points and attendance is worth 20 points. Attendance works like this. Out of 20 points. Every time you don't come to class and you also don't take leave. I will take away three points. Uh, out of 100 points daily grade, every time you don't come to class and you don't take leave. I will take away 15 points. Um, to take leave, just use the school system. You don't have to tell me uh, as long as the school says it's OK, then it's OK. All right, uh, do you have and then like the learning guidance here? Learning guidance, come to class, write the essays and you'll do fine. So no pressure. Uh, do you have questions about this? OK, so like. Um, the midterm, according to the course information system, the midterm grade will be the midterm 20%. And the. Final exam grade will be the two essays. 60% and then your daily grade will be attendance 20%. OK, uh, so next let's look at the detailed schedule and in fact, I this time I put it as part of the handout, so I'm going to pass that out now. Good news, our TA has arrived. Um, so I'd like to introduce everyone to. Emily Lin, uh, Emily, would you like to introduce yourself? All right, thank you. Um, so now you know what she looks like. Uh, her email is on Moodle and uh, she will help us pass out the handout. Um, Emily took this class with me before. She's currently a senior in our department. So she's very experienced and very smart. If you have any questions, feel free to talk to her. OK, so first page of the handout is this thing, the detailed schedule. 
Um, there are four parts, which is why I decided to make it its own PDF. Uh, because if I write it on the school's syllabus, it would look very confusing. In fact, I did write it on the school syllabus and it does look confusing. So here's what we're doing, right? Two essays, argument and research essay. So the first half of the semester will be doing argument essay. The second half will be doing the research essay. Week one, introduction to the course and argument essays. Great, we're doing that right now. Week two, we'll be doing an activity that I call argument analysis. Uh, this activity will be designed to help you think more deeply about uh, how to structure an argument essay. Uh, and the homework for week two is to go home and choose a topic to write your argument essay about. You get to choose your own topic. I'm not going to tell you what to write. I will tell you what not to write. It's a I think it's a bad idea to write about global warming. Or the death penalty. Or priority seating. These three topics generally do not uh, make for good argument essays. Um, you don't have to memorize that right now because week four we will have our first conference and we will talk about your argument topic. In the meantime, week three field trip. Uh, March 8th is the date of our department's international academic conference. I'm presenting a paper. I'm helping other people present papers. I can't be here. So if I can't be here, then you guys have to be there with me. So that's the field trip. Uh, I will explain the details about how to do this a little bit later. OK, week four, our first conference. Most of this class will be one on one conferences with me. Uh, and while we're talking, Emily will uh, helpfully go around and talk with you guys uh, to help you in your thinking and your writing. So the first conference week four, we're just going to talk about your argument topic. Uh, does it work? What will you talk about? What should you pay attention to? That kind of thing. The homework for week four is to go home and actually write the damn thing. Week five, you will bring whatever you have written and we'll talk about it again. You can think of this as a progress report. Homework for week five is to go home and either keep writing or revise what you have already written according to our discussion. Week six, same thing, but for week six, you'd have to finish. Ha you have to have finished writing something. For week six, I want to see a full rough draft. And again, you'll bring that to me. I'll look at it and give you my immediate feedback. We'll talk about it. Um, when you go home, your homework is to rewrite or uh, revise according to our discussion and then upload a PDF file to Moodle. I'll show you where to upload that later. Week seven is a holiday. Don't come to class. If you come to class, I'm not here. Um, but during that week, I will go over your essays and I will give you a very detailed edit, line by line, word by word edit, and also give you some general feedback. Week eight, uh, hopefully sometime before week eight, I will return your essays to you. Uh, and so on week eight, you can bring uh, the marked version of your essays to me and we'll talk about uh, my feedback. If you have questions, something you don't understand, uh, or you have further questions, uh, this would be the time to talk to me about that. Uh, the homework for week eight is to revise your essay according to our to my feedback and according to our discussion and then upload the final draft to Moodle and I will grade your final draft. I will only grade your final draft. All of these earlier meetings, all of these earlier drafts will not be graded. So that means two things. One, when you're doing these earlier steps, no pressure. You can try new things. You can try new ideas. If it doesn't work out, we'll talk about it. It's fine. But this also means that if you don't 
upload a final draft, you will get a zero because I will only grade the final draft. So please remember to upload the final draft. Week nine midterm exam. I will give you, I think, five argument essay topics. You will choose one, write an essay, write in class with no help. Week 10, we move into the second unit, research essays. I will explain more about this at that time, but the basic idea of a research essay is this is an exposition essay without using your own ideas. You can only use other people's ideas. Now, the focus of this unit will not actually be the essay. The focus of this unit will be how do you source your ideas? How do you tell me which ideas come from which people? That is called citation, in yong. And the focus of this unit will be, do your citations follow the rules? There are very strict citation rules. Um, you guys know like online, sometimes you will see like an online game. It gives you two very similar pictures and you have to find out what are the differences. Yeah, that's what citations are like. You should have uh, an idea of what a correct citation looks like. And then when you look at your own citations, you have to find where are the mistakes and you have to fix them. I should warn you that this is not easy. Even in graduate school, graduate school students also struggle with this. Um, so because it's not easy, I will spend two weeks teaching you how to do this and how to spot the mistakes. So that's week 12, week 13. Now, because the research essay cannot use your own ideas, you can only use other people's ideas. So you will have to spend more time to gather materials to take those ideas and put them together into an essay. So uh, week 10, I will start introducing this thing and your homework will be to go home and choose an essay topic. Week 11, I will continue explaining citations and your homework will be to gather sources, to find materials. Week 12, conference. You will come up here one by one and we will talk about your topic and what materials you have found. Uh, whether that will work, how will it work, what else do you need, that kind of thing. Homework for week 12 is you go home and you write the essay. Week 13, progress report. Whatever you have written, bring up to me. We will talk about it. Your homework is to go home and continue writing or to revise what you have already written. Week 14, finish writing the rough draft or revising the draft. Uh, we'll talk about it. Go home, rewrite, upload. Week 15, movie. Because I don't know what else to do. Uh, during that week, I will again edit your research essays. So week 16, you will receive the marked essay. We will talk about it. Homework is to go home, revise according to my feedback and the discussion, and upload the final draft to let me give you a score. That leaves two more weeks. Uh, these two weeks uh, used to be the midterm and final exam weeks. Instead, we're doing something new. I have observed year after year after editing student essays, after talking about it with students, when they upload your uh, the final drafts, there are still mistakes and there are still things that could be improved. So the last two weeks, we're going to deal with those things. These two weeks are optional. If you don't care, you don't have to do this. Week 17 will be a conference about your uh, argument as a final draft. Um, I will have given you a score. You already have a score. But if you want a higher score, uh, come to class, meet with me. I will show you where you can improve and you will have a little bit of time to revise and then upload a last chance draft. And hopefully your score will improve. Week 18, same thing, but for the research essay. 
Now, when I say a little bit of time, I have to give uh, I have to send out your final scores. In week 19 on Thursday. Noon. This is week 18 Friday. I have to send out your scores week 19 Thursday noon, so your deadline will be Tuesday midnight. That's not one week, so there really is not a lot of time if you want to do this. OK, and that's the detailed schedule. Questions? All right, so. Um, that's the schedule. Next, uh, class emails. So if I need to tell you something and it cannot wait for class, I will send you guys a class email. This will e OK, so if you have set up an alternative email in the student course, sorry, student information system, this email will go to your uh, private email. If you did not set an alternative email, this will go to your school email account. I know not everybody checks their school email account every day. So if there's a new message, I will change the title of this link. I'll add a date and I'll add the title of the latest message. That way, when you come here, you can see there's a new message. Um, although you really should like find a way to link your school email account to your personal email account. There are ways that you can forward emails to yourself. Next, I'm teaching in English. Uh, and you may have noticed that I am recording this lecture. I'm going to upload this to YouTube because when uh, I upload an English video to YouTube, YouTube will spend one day and produce a transcript. And the transcript is searchable. So for example, if you missed one part of the lecture and you want to watch it again, you don't have to watch the whole lecture. You can open the transcript, search for a keyword, and jump right to that part of the video. Saves you time. Uh, and how do you do this? I have recorded a short YouTube video to teach you how to do this. Next, this is where I will input your midterm exam grade. This is where I will input your attendance grade. You cannot see this. This is just for me. Next, this is the handout in your hands. If you forget a paper copy or your dog eats it or whatever, um, you can use the PDF here. Although it looks like I have a lot of extra copies. so. If you need another one, feel free to come and take one. Uh, OK, and then these four files are for your reference only. If you want to improve your English or English writing, these are some resources that might be helpful. First one is uh, written by yours truly. I write about uh, some advice about how to improve your English. Second one was also written by yours truly about what counts as good English writing and how you can do that. The third one is a writing textbook. It's a very good writing textbook about how uh, you can write better sentences, better paragraphs, uh, better essays. And it also has practice questions. So if you want to do those questions, uh, you can bring your answers to me and we can discuss them. The last one, uh, I only discovered this one two days ago. This is an academic essay about how people in the classical West used to learn writing. So the ancient Greeks, the ancient Romans. Uh, for the ancient Greeks and ancient Romans, writing and speeches were incredibly important, especially uh, ancient Athens, which was one of the earliest Western democracies. In a democracy, everybody can influence public affairs as long as they speak well and they write well. So uh, and in Republic Rome as well. So the key to gaining power was to be persuasive and convincing and know how to write and know how to speak. And therefore everybody was studying writing. Incredibly important. So this uh, essay goes over the kinds of things that students would do, the kinds of assignments that they would have. 
And uh, even though th this is thousands of years ago, some of those assignments, some of those activities, they look kind of fun. They look like they might actually help you learn even today. Uh, but because we are busy doing other things, um, so I may not have time to do those activities with you. Also, I know you guys are very busy. What are you like taking 21, 24, 28 credits? Uh, you don't have time to do this stuff, but if you want to, it's here. Uh, you can try it. Anything you write, you can bring to me and we can talk about it. Um, by the way, you guys know that the school expects you to do double the homework of class, right? So like every hour you spend in the classroom, the school expects you to spend two hours studying at home. Did you know this? So if you're taking uh, 24, 25 credits, that's 25 hours per week, and you have to add another 50 hours of studying at home, that's a total of 75 hours learning every week. 75 divided by 70, that's more than 10 hours a day learning. Uh, this is what the school expects you to do. Um, but I know you guys are, are really busy. That's probably not going to happen. Um, but you know, that's the framework under which the school is uh, offering you courses and under which we're supposed to be designing these courses. So just so you know. OK, uh, this is the introduction unit. This is the stuff we're going to be using today. So like the general course info, this is this should be useful for you for the whole semester. Introduction is what we're talking about today. First thing is the rubric. So when I say I will give your essay a grade, this is what I mean. Your essays will be graded according to these three dimensions. Uh, this is on page two of your handout. Can you please flip to page two? Uh, OK, and then please pick up a pen. Please take out a pen. OK, everybody on page two. Everybody have a pen or a pencil. OK, here's what I want you to do. I want you to cross out page two. This version is the wrong version. I will give you the new version. Uh, sorry about that. So there's actually a story behind why the version in your handout is wrong. The version online is right. In the handout online or in the individual rubric file online, those are right. Uh, and the reason that the version in your paper handout is wrong is because I made this handout last semester, week 19. Now you might be thinking, why did you do that so early? And the reason is because. Um, so in the past, if I wanted to make a handout, I would prepare the file, I would fill out an application form and I would send it to the school's printing shop and there would be a guy over there and his only job was to print stuff for every teacher in the school. That guy retired. So if I want to make handouts. OK, so at the end of last semester, I knew he was retiring. I didn't know what would happen next. There have been times when in this school somebody has retired and nobody took their job. So I was very worried that I would not be able to make handouts this semester. So I made all my handouts last semester. 
uh, and then I change the rubric later. So sorry about that. It turns out that the new system for making handouts is that I have to make my own handouts. The printing guy retired, but the printer is still there. And so if I want handouts, I have to take my own files, go over to the printer and do it myself. And then I have to like bring a whole stack of paper up back to my office. Um, yeah, so when we're talking about the rubric, please use the, the, uh, the new version. So this class is going to integrate chat GPT into your writing process to correct your grammar and spelling. Um, although it won't be perfect, so even after asking it to help you, you still have to look over your own essay. Now, because the grammar and spelling will probably not be a big issue anymore, I can't simply give you a grade based on the grammar and spelling. Instead, I'm going to give you a grade based on these three aspects. This is taken from Aristotle, Yaris Zoda. A good essay should have three, uh, should do well on these three aspects. Logos is the content, the reasoning, the logic. Pathos is the emotion. How are you able to connect with your reader emotionally. Ethos is the relationship between the author and the reader. In other words, how can you make the reader trust you? How can you make the reader want to keep reading and actually believe what you say? Uh, each dimension will have a highest score of five from one to five. Uh, so for example, logos, the best uh, essay will have Solid reasoning supported by deep analysis and a persuasive presentation order. So not just your ideas, but also what is the order of your ideas? Does the order make sense? Level three logos will have acceptable reasoning supported by some analysis and an awareness of presentation order as an aspect of writing. What does awareness mean? It means I can tell that you're trying. Uh, level two, substantive assertions with minimal development and support. Level one, empty slogans with no development. So level one would be like, I like my teacher. He is very good. Thank you. That's level one. Right. I don't think anybody will get a level one, but it's there just in case. Pathos level five, the best uh, essays with the best pathos will have will um, be able to powerfully evoke universal human experiences and emotions with vivid examples. In other words, you're Taylor Swift. Level three will often attempt to evoke recognizable human experiences and emotions with some examples. So again, it looks I know that you're trying. You have succeeded sometimes, but most of the time not. Level two demonstrates awareness of emotional resonance. Resonance is a uh, gongming as an aspect of writing. So again, it, I can tell that you're trying. And level one presents ideas with only factual assertions using straightforward sentence structures. In other words, you don't care about emotion. You're always doing subject verb object subject verb object subject verb object no examples you just say stuff and you leave it that's level one finally ethos level five inspires readers trust in and admiration of the writer so when i read your essay i believe you and i think wow this is a great essay you are a great person so like President Obama. Level three, or I should say level four, inspires readers trust in the writer. So if I believe you, but I don't feel that, wow, this is a great essay, you're a great guy, then you only get level four. Level three presents a coherent writerly persona. Persona means character. You are a human being. You are a three-dimensional person. 
you have your hopes, your fears, your dreams, your loves, your hates. Uh, you are a complete person. But it is impossible to put all of you on the page. You can only choose to put some parts of yourself on the page. When you write an essay, are you presenting yourself as a student, as an expert, as a daughter or a son, as a friend, as a curious uh, stranger? What kind of character are you putting on the page? Level three says that no matter what character you choose, it is a coherent person. It feels like somebody. It's not just uh, random details. It fits together to create a character. Level two demonstrates awareness of the reader writer relationship as an aspect of writing. Again, I can tell that you're trying. And level one, no discernible awareness of the reader writer relationship. In other words, it feels like this was written by ChatGPT, not by a person. Um, so every let's see, each essay is worth 30%. There are five levels, three dimensions. So like the highest score is 15. So actually you can multiply each by two, right? So the lowest possible score, as long as you hand in an essay, the lowest possible score will be six and the highest possible score will be 30. OK, do you have questions about? Oh, oh, sorry, one more thing. Two more things. First is if there are still spelling and grammar errors, I will take away one point from ethos because if I see a serious grammar or spelling mistake, it makes me trust you a little less. So I'm taking you away from ethos. Uh, and the other thing is that this only applies to argument essays. Uh, and the essays of writing three, but in writing four, only argument essays. For the research essay, I'm not looking at your actual essay. I'm only looking at your sources and your citations. Uh, do your sources and your information fit together? And are you citing those sources correctly? So not anything to do with this. This is only for the argument essay. OK, questions? Um, later, you will see that not only is ChatGPT bad at ethos, it's also bad at pathos and not very good at logos. It's kind of worthless, actually. It's only good at grammar and spelling, and it's not even perfect at grammar and spelling. So um, I also did this last semester, as some of you know, and I also realized that some of you were not actually writing first. You were using ChatGPT first and then adding to it. Um, ideally, that would be fine, as long as the resulting essay uh, has been looked over carefully by yourself and you accept everything on the page, it should be fine. The problem is uh, some of you are not able to notice where you can or should improve on what ChatGBT is giving you. Like it spits out an essay or what looks like an essay. It, the grammar is great. The spelling is perfect. The topic is your topic. You add in two examples and you think that's a great essay, but you did not notice that the reasoning is not deep. You did not notice that when I read it, I don't actually trust it. Um, so it's not just about, you know, when we say a human touch, you might think, OK, emotions, trust, that's human. But even for logos, even for the logic and the reasoning, ChatGPT does not do a very good job. So. Uh, it should only help you in terms of grammar and spelling, and you can ask for advice, but you really should think about it before you accept whatever it tells you. The best way to write an essay is still to write it yourself and then ask it or me or the TA or other people to help you improve. OK, yeah, OK, that's it. Questions? 
Um, so speaking of ChatGPT, there have been news reports recently that it has been spewing out nonsense. Uh, and also last semester, some of you told me that uh, it did not correct your mistakes. One way to deal with this is um, start a new dialogue every time. Like uh, you have a you're chatting with it, right there. So there's like a history, but every time you ask it for help, start a new conversation. Um, it could be that when you're talking with it and you make mistakes, maybe it will accept those mistakes. It will think that it's fine. And so when it responds to you, it will also have mistakes. So by starting a new conversation, maybe you can avoid that. Also, this is a privacy concern. Did you know that ChatGPT is taking all of your conversations and sending them to OpenAI for analysis? So if you don't want the company to analyze your words, you should delete old conversations. OK, so that's the rubric. Um, when you're writing the essay, if you use Google Docs, you should be careful to avoid the Google Docs error. What's wrong with this picture? How many words is highlighted? Two. How many words does the computer think it's highlighted? Five. What the fuck? And the reason is because the computer thinks every letter is a word. Those are zi. You can tell that it's a problem because like, look at this, the second line. It's one S. That's not a word. Look at the third line. It's like the, the second half of a, a bigger word. It's breaking words randomly. And the reason it thinks that this is OK is because to the computer, every letter is its own word. Uh, so if you see this kind of situation, you will know that you have encountered the Google Docs error. This happens when uh, you write in Google Docs and then you try to save it as a Word file, and this can happen. So if you do write using Google Docs, the best way to avoid this is either you save it as a PDF directly, or you copy the whole thing and then paste it into Microsoft Word. If you do run into this, I don't know how to save you. Like there is no Microsoft Word setting I could use to turn this into something that's OK. Uh, the only way I have discovered to to solve this problem is copy the whole essay, open something new that is not Microsoft Word, paste it there, copy it again, open a new Microsoft Word file and then paste it there. Uh, so it's better just to avoid this problem in the first place. OK, now uh, I mentioned March 8th is a field trip to the international conference. Here is the conference program. A uh, program means schedule. Uh, I'll show you that later. But the point is this to prove. No, sorry to prove to the school that you guys actually went to the conference. I need a group photo with you guys. Um, so please meet me at 1250 at room J604 and we'll take a group photo. But that's for the school. For the class, attendance will be based on your conference reflections. Convince me that you actually went to the conference. Uh, otherwise, I will mark you as absent. OK, so here's the conference program. Here's the conference program. The conference will be held at Jiha uh, Xiaochu. Do you guys know where that is? The Jiha campus? OK, so like Mingchuan has four main campuses in Taiwan. Taipei, Taoren, Jiha, and Jingmen. We're not going to Jingmen. Uh, Jiha campus is actually in Taipei. It's very near the Taipei campus. It's one building in the middle of the city. And the whole conference will take place in that building. It says day one. 
does this mean there is a day two? Yes, there is a day two. The conference is two days, Friday and Saturday. Um, if you want to, you can come on Saturday, uh, but the group photo will be on Friday. Also in this file, OK, so how do we read this? A session uh, and then the time, 8.30 to 8.55, and then different rooms. This means that during this time period, all of these rooms will have some kind of presentation at the same time. So if you're interested in these topics, you can only choose one to go to during each session. Uh, as you can see, I will be here, J604. I'm presenting my own research. In fact, this research is based on our class. Uh, last semester, I asked you to sign a consent form to allow me to run your essays through ChatGPT to ask it um, to give you a score. That's the research I will be presenting. So if you're curious about our results, you're welcome to come and listen. Then at nine o'clock, the opening ceremony, everybody goes to the same room. Then the next session, 9.35 to 10.50, again, you have to choose one room. Uh, for each session, there might be more than one presentation, right? So one speaker, two speakers, three speakers. So this session has three presentations. Um, and it will be controlled by one moderator, Nancy. So Nancy will be in charge of introducing each speaker, controlling the time, uh, controlling the Q&A session afterwards. Uh, and during that time, I will be in J506 listening to Cedric. Then 11 to 12, there will be a keynote speech. Keynote means very important. Uh, I think in Chinese we call this Zhu Ti Yan Jiang. So everybody will go to the same room and listen to the same person talk. 12 10 to 1 is lunchtime. Uh, and then in the afternoon, we have a third session. I will be in J604. I am the moderator. And so this begins at 1 o'clock. Please come at 1250 so we have time to take a group photo. Okay. Um, and you can either stay and listen to these two groups of senior students present their graduation research, or you can choose another room, or you can go home. I don't really care. Uh, but a lot of these topics are quite interesting. You can read through this. You can plan like your route through this map. Um, and then at two o'clock, there's another keynote speech. 310 to 4, uh, another list of sessions. I will be at J506 with Chris. Uh, and then 410 to 525, another session. I will be in room J603. Uh, there's a break time. How long is this break time? Four to, <laughs> four to 410, 10 minute break. <laughs> uh, and I guess there will be some snacks or something. Right, sessions, uh, and then that's the first day. Second day, same thing, 8.30 to 9.50, lots of sessions. I will again be with, no, I will be with uh, Charles at J506. Uh, and then 10 to 11, keynote speech, 11.10 to 12.10, another keynote speech. 12.20 to 120, we have something called a colloquium. A colloquium is where a group of people uh, give their ideas about the same topic and they kind of have a discussion. Um, it says there's no moderator, but actually I'm the moderator, so uh, I will be there helping them have this conversation. Uh, you're free to join us. It's about AI. Um, at the same time, is it the same time? No, it's not the same time. 1.30, will, there will be an alumni meeting. Xiao you hui, xi you hui. Uh, if you want to see what um, people who have graduated from our department are now doing. Uh, OK, and then afternoon. Uh, 1.30 to 2.30, at the same time as the alumni meeting, there will be a workshop. Workshop means that it's not just a lecture. The lecturer will have an activity and everybody will join in doing the activity. Uh, 
I'm going to have lunch at that time, right? I'm I'm not I'm busy during lunch hours, so that's when I'm having lunch. Uh, 1 30 to 2 30, another workshop, 2 40 to 3 40, another keynote speech, and then 3 50 to 4 40, another set of sessions. Uh, I will be with Jason at J508. Uh, and then the closing ceremony, which we call a farewell dialogue. And then um, there will be a secret dinner for uh, faculty that you're not invited to because it's a secret. OK, so that is the conference program. Uh, just to remind you one more time, you do have to be. Here, J604 on Friday, March 8th, 1250 to take a photo. Actually, I have to have four photos. We're going to take four photos. Uh, and the rest of the time you can plan which sessions you want to attend if you are interested. Um, and then um, before midnight on March 10, which is Sunday, so you only have one weekend to do this, write some reflections to convince me you were actually there and then I will mark you as present. Questions? It'll be fun. You can see world class and national experts shared their latest research findings into AI, English education, literature, culture, communication. Lots of fun. OK, uh, and then here are the files we will. Sorry, here are the files we will need for the argument unit. This is where you will upload. Draft three, this is the one that I will go home and edit for you. Here you upload the final draft and I will give you a score. And if you want to do the last chance conference, here is where you will upload your final final draft. Um, but you can only do this if you did not miss the original final draft. You cannot skip the final draft, right? This is required. This is optional. So if you don't do the required thing, you cannot do the optional thing. Um, for all of these, you can only upload a PDF. Uh, OK, so last semester, some students uh, scanned whatever and turned it into a PDF. Sure, why not? Uh, but I need a PDF so that I can mark your essay. And then at the bottom here, you have two example essays. Uh, I'm not going to spend time on this in class because these are longer essays. These are professional essays. Um, but if you're interested in how people write argument essays, you can take some time to read them. Uh, the first essay is. Uh, OK, so there is a professor of psychology named Steven Pinker, and he believes that if someone has. Uh, okay, or how should I say this? It is better for somebody not to be born than to be born with a serious disability and have to suffer their whole life. That is his political belief. This essay is the experience of a seriously disabled person meeting Steven Pinker and talking about this idea. Uh, the second essay, <laughs> I love this. This second essay is really cool. OK, here's here's what it is. Some people believe that Taylor Swift is not straight. Maybe she's gay, maybe she's bi. One of those people is in control of the New York Times opinion section, and she used her platform to write an essay. First of all, explaining why she believes Taylor Swift is not entirely straight. But then she's arguing for why it should be OK to talk about a public figure and whether they are straight or not. Um, this is actually quite dangerous because for queer people, they have a long history of being forced out of the closet uh, and then being discriminated against and uh, suffering at the hands of society. So a lot of people disagreed with this essay. A lot of people said you should not, even if a person is really famous, you should not 
act like you can force them out of the closet. So this essay is not about is Taylor Swift gay? This essay is about is it OK to ask whether Taylor Swift is gay? Uh, and then at the end of the essay, I have added uh, Taylor Swift's team's response to this essay. So you get both sides of the question. OK, and then that's the argument unit. Uh, I'll talk about the research essays after the break.
OK, under the argument essay unit. We have the materials for the research essay unit. I have a really, really long PowerPoint presentation for you guys. Uh, and then the PDF is a cheat sheet. It has all the answers, not all, most of the answers you will need. But just because you have the answers doesn't mean you will know how to use the answers. Um, so we will also talk about that uh, in the second half of the semester. Um, then we have your upload areas, same as for the argument essay. And we have exactly one example of how to write a research essay. Now, this is a professional research essay, so it is not easy to read. But you don't have to understand most of it. You just have to observe how does it use its sources. How does it cite its sources? And then finally, at the very bottom, we have a unit called extra credit. In, last semester, I called this the bonus. This semester, I'm changing it a little bit. Um, there are actually two kinds. If you think you're not going to pass the course, then you should do the last chance quiz. This is one open-ended essay question. Um, and, and there's really no, no way to prepare, so I'm just going to leave it here. And if you take the last chance quiz, your highest semester score will be 60, or if you're a graduate student, 70, uh, which is the passing score. If you think you are going to pass and you just want a higher score, then you can do the more traditional bonus thing. Um, and uh, remember that if you have already done this before and you succeeded in getting a higher score, tell me and I will give you a different essay. If you respond to the same essay twice, it will not count. Um, so the first one is for if you're not going to pass. The second one is for if you think you are going to pass and you just want a higher score. You cannot do both. You can only do one. Right, I will count only one. OK, that's the Moodle page. Questions? OK, um, I'm, I'm going to return something to you. I'm going to give you back your final exams. Um, but I also want to ask for your help. Last semester, I asked you to do activity one and activity two, right? You wrote two essays by hand. I forgot to ask you to tell me which one is the first essay and which one is the second essay. So I'm going to give you back your final exam and the two activity essays. Um, please write on the first one one and on the second one two and then give it back to me after class. If you don't receive an activity essay, it's because I figured out which one is first and which one is second, or you did not write an activity essay. OK, so uh, Emily and I will now hand it back to you.
OK, finished the housekeeping. Let's talk about argument essays. The thing about an argument essay is that it's also not very easy. The the there it looks a lot like a comparison contrast essay. The main difference is that for a comparison contrast essay. Your reader does not know which one is which and you are giving the reader information. For an argument essay, your reader knows what is what and they have an opinion and their opinion is the opposite of your opinion. So a comparison contrast essay has a neutral reader, but an argument essay has a hostile reader. They disagree with you. And so your job is not just to tell your reader why this is right. You also have to explain why they are wrong. So you have to attack and defend. A good argument essay will leave no stone unturned. A good argument essay will respond to every single point. So that's what makes an argument essay hard because you don't actually have somebody to argue with. You have to imagine what the other person is thinking. So like choose any topic. Not any topic. I'm going to choose the death penalty because you're not supposed to write about it. It's hard to write about. So if I am against the death penalty, I can't just say why the death penalty is um, a bad idea. I also have to say why the death penalty is not a good idea. These are two different things. The death penalty is bad because A, because B, because C. And then some people think the death penalty is good because of D and E and F, but those people are wrong. I have to do both. So uh, when you're choosing a topic and you're thinking about what to write and what to say, you have to be able to see both sides. Presumably you will choose a topic that you care about. And so if you care about it, you will be able to come up with reasons explaining why uh, you take your position. But then you have to use an act of imagination and empathy to think about why some people would believe the opposite thing. And then you have to take that empathy and turn it into a weapon to use against your enemies. So that's the argument essays. Uh, main goal. Now, if we look at page three of the handout, this basically explains all that I just talked about. Uh, a good argument will have a name uh, or something simple to help the reader understand what you're going to talk about. It should have a main point. In this case, uh, for this example, it is rice imports should not be allowed. That's the main point. It should have reasons for each point because farmers will lose their jobs. Um, evidence, you can either find external evidence or you can give examples or you can tell a story. Uh, if you remember last semester, our first unit was narrative, telling stories. An argument essay could use narrative. It will have exposition. It will have cause effect and it will have comparison contrast. So in other words, this unit is uh, based on everything you learned last semester. Um, and then here you also have to recognize opposite viewpoints. Uh, so in this case, the main point is to ban rice imports. So the opposite viewpoint, it is said that free trade is important to keep with the trend toward globalizing the world economy. So somebody who supports allowing rice into the country probably would think this. And then you have to respond. Uh, response in this case can be called a refutation. It could be called a rebuttal, uh, but it's basically a response. And the response of this author is, Food is a necessity, therefore it should be considered differently 
than other commodities. So it, the, the response is saying, yes, free trade is important, but rice is not just another thing. People depend on rice. If they can't buy cheap rice, they will die. So free trade is not the point. That's a good response. Um, but really what I want you to focus on is here. Apparently it did not get printed onto your handout. Uh, in this research paper, the, the uh, researchers uh, marked arguments um, in the following, according to the following standards. Arguments are taken to be claims supported by reasons. Unsupported claims are merely opinions. So here, if a claim has a reason, that's an argument. If there's only a claim, that's not an argument, that's an opinion. If the reason supporting a claim was deemed inadequate, so the reason is not good enough, then the argument was considered flawed. Similarly, if an essay simply restated an argument from the passage using the same reasons, this was not scored as an argument because critical thinking entails going beyond what has already been stated to discover, develop, and clarify an argument and the thinking process involved. This is the key point. To make a good argument, you have to uh, think more, develop more, and clarify your meaning. Uh, in this case, in the case of this class, the what has already been stated, you can think of this as your original idea. Uh, if you write about the death penalty, again, don't write about the death penalty, but if you write about the death penalty, either for or against, if you have an opinion, you will have some ideas, but it's not enough just to write down your ideas. You have to be able to explain why. Some people think the death penalty is good. If you ask why, they will give you some reasons, but if you ask why are those reasons good, some people will start to struggle and find a hard time explaining why are these reasons good? Why are these reasons important? So a good argument goes beyond your original ideas. It goes deeper, it uh, adds levels, and it clarifies your thinking process. So even when you're writing about your own beliefs, you have to work at it. And then you have to work at writing about the other side. Oh, PowerPoint, great. PowerPoint time, haha. <laughs> PowerPoint. So this is, hang on, the basic structure of an argument essay. When I say basic structure, I mean that every argument essay should have these things. Maybe the order will be different, but uh, it should have these elements. You have to let the reader know why is this issue important? In other words, why should the reader care? If the reader doesn't care, they won't keep reading your essay. And even if you have the best arguments in the world, if your reader doesn't read it, it doesn't matter. So why is this essay important? Then you have to explain the two main sides of the issue. In the real world, every issue has more than two sides. Even, uh, for example, who should I vote for often ha at least has three sides. Even if only two people are running for office, you always have the third option to not vote. So every issue has at least three sides, but to write an argument essay, you have to pick the two main sides. And so you also have to tell the reader, so I'm talking about these two sides. You, only, you can only pick one. And then finally, you have to tell the reader which side are you on, the writer, yourself. Out of these two sides, which one do you believe in? You should say this first, early in the essay, somewhere in the beginning. 
Um, for a comparison contrast essay, I know a lot of you like to leave this to the very end, right? Here's the thing. Here's some good points. Here are some bad points. I think this, but it's up to you. That's a very kind and friendly comparison contrast essay. But we're writing an aggressive attacking argument essay, so you have to stand up and tell your reader actually this is right. The other side is wrong. And that helps your reader prepare to read the rest of the essay. They don't have to think about, oh, when he says this, is he standing on this side or that side? When she says the next thing, is she standing on this side or that side? It's very confusing. Tell your reader first, and your reader will be very clear about what's going to happen in the rest of the essay. Then you have to have actual arguments. I'll talk about that in the next slide. Uh, and every argument, as I keep saying, has to account for your side and the other side. But after, uh, but sometimes you have more ideas than the other side. There are some things you, you can't think of from the other side. So that's what number three is. After comparing your side and the other side on various different points, do you have other ideas, random ideas that helps your side? And you can put those ideas uh, in number three. Finally, the conclusion. Um, classic conclusion, summary and looking toward the future. I think we all know how to do a summary, right? So in this essay, I talked about this, that, and that. But then you have to look toward a better future, a better world. The idea is, if you follow me, society will be improved, cancer will be cured, the future will be perfect. If you follow the other guy, everybody's going to hell immediately. Um, that's the basic spirit of the look toward a better world part of the conclusion. It's usually a good idea to end on a good note. So first say, if you follow them, you're going to hell. Then say, if you follow me, everybody will, will live forever. Right, end on a positive note. Okay. Now the really important parts. How do you make an argument? For each argument, uh, it is actually a comparison. But it's a biased comparison. The comparison will always end up being to your favor. So um, just like any attack, you first have to uh, aim at a target. So number one, what does the other side think? Why do they think this? That is picking your target. Notice it's not just what do they think. You still have to explain why do they think this? What is their logic? Uh, if you don't add the logic, it doesn't sound convincing. It sounds like you're picking random targets. We don't know why exactly you're talking about uh, this part of the other side. You have to show why some people actually do believe this, why it's uh, plausible for some people to believe this. Then second point, after you aim, then you attack. And I will explain in the next slide, how do you attack? And then the third one, you have to come back and say, therefore, I am right. And you have to explain why your side is the better choice. Uh, this is the logic part. And if you do that, you will have good a good logo score. But in order to get a good pathos score, you have to have examples. Examples tell the story. Logos tells the reader why you are right. Pathos lets the reader feel why you are right. You guys have that experience, right? Like, uh, let's say uh, your teacher or your parent is lecturing you about something and you know that they're right, but it feels very annoying and you just really don't want to be here and listening to this lecture. If you don't add an example, that's kind of how it feels like for the reader. But if you can add an interesting and convincing story, uh, it would help your reader not just see that you're right, but feel that you're right. And there are two ways to do this. 
you can either use one example for each argument. Or if you can think of a good example for every argument, you can stick with the same example. Uh, and in that case, usually it will be telling some kind of story. So again, if your example is the death penalty, you can maybe like choose to tell the story of a prisoner who is sentenced to death. Uh, and depending on which side, you might focus on what they did or how they are living in jail. You might choose the example of the victim and the victim's family. Uh, and if you can fit all of your arguments onto that example, it would actually be a more powerful example. But if you can't think of a central example, that's also fine. Just choose a different example for each argument. And the way to think about examples is um, in, in the argument, this is about logic. But in the example, this is about telling a story. So each of the two sides is its own world. Why is your world better than the other side's world? If you accept their arguments, what would the world be like? What would people experience? If you accept your arguments, what would the world be like? Uh, what would people experience? Tell a story, compare. Uh, two situations and or two uh, worlds, story worlds. You can tell I'm a literature teacher. OK, and then finally, how do you attack? Rebuttal, this, rebuttal just means you're responding to the other side. This is a bit different. Uh, these are options. Choose the most suitable option for each point. Uh, this is it's kind of confusing, but the the first one is the lowest level and the last one is the highest level. Sorry about that. Um, so the lowest level is no, they have the wrong facts. If you look at the real facts, they actually support my side. But you know, if the other side has the right facts, then you have to move on to level two. Yes, they have the right facts, but it's irrelevant. That's not the main point. The main point is these set of facts, not those set of facts. But what if they have the right facts and they are important or they are relevant? It's related to what they're talking about. Then you have to say, OK, you, you know what you're talking about, but that's not really the important thing. The important thing is something else. Uh, so yes, you're right, but only to a point. There's a bigger point over here. But finally, what if they are right, they are relevant, and it is important. How do you respond to that? This is the dark magic of uh, argument essays. You have to say that, yes, you're right, it is important, but if we follow you, we're going to sacrifice something even more important. In Chinese, I like to call this hua da bing. You have to like draw a bigger and more important picture for your own side. Um, OK, I'll give you a short example. Somebody give me a topic that is not the death penalty, not global warming and not priority seating. OK, give me a good idea. Forest fires. OK, what are the two sides? OK, I'll come back to that. Somebody over here. Abortion. Excellent. Um, so for the sake of argument. Not reflecting my personal belief, not of reflecting what I assume is your personal belief, but for the sake of example only. Let's say I'm standing on the side of against abortion. I think abortion for the example of example, I think abortion should be banned except for like emergency cases. Um, so if somebody says um, we should let everyone have abortions, if you uh, ban all abortions, um, um, you know, what was it like? 
victims of rape and incest and mothers who are going to die will not be able to get an abortion. I can say you're wrong. I don't support banning those kinds of abortions. But then if they say um, women who don't have enough money to support their babies will not be able to get an abortion, I could say you're right, but you're missing the point because women are not uh, most almost all women have a network of supporting uh, people like family or friends. They can ask the government for help. There are ways to solve this problem. So you're right. Some women don't have enough resources, but they can uh, get resources somehow to support their babies anyway. But what if they say that uh, in the process of getting those resources, right, asking help from family and friends, asking help from the government, it has other costs. Like that means that their family and friends have to pay more and over like 18 years. The government has to spend more on this instead of more on that. I can say uh, you're right. It will cost society more resources, but it's worth doing because you're supporting a brand new child into this world. So even if it does cost society more, that's not important. The important thing is bringing a new life into the world. Finally, if they say that, yes, in the end you get to raise a new baby, but studies show that unwanted babies grow up into mentally unhealthy adults and that like causes more problems for society in the future, then I could say, uh, you're right, that is true, but uh, there's a bigger issue. Even if uh, I agree that it's less healthy for uh, unwanted babies to be led to exist. The bigger issue is that if you prevent them from existing, aren't you killing them? Look at how many mentally unhealthy people we already have. Are you saying those people all deserve to die? What happened to the sanctity of life? Uh, we, can't, we don't have the right to say who should live or who should die. We have the responsibility to help everybody try to have as good a life as they can. So I'm agreeing with everything the other side says. But I'm saying there's a bigger issue over here. OK, let's flip. Now I'm against abortion. Sorry, now I'm uh, for the right to abortion. If uh, one side says, but aborting a baby is you're killing babies. I can say no, no, no. A baby is uh, only a baby after it's born. Before it's born, it's not a baby. You're wrong. Uh, if the other side says, um, let's see. Uh, something, something. Um, but uh, no, that's I keep thinking of arguments that are wrong. <laughs> let's see. Is there a, a good argument that's irrelevant? Um, OK, here's one. So. Uh, but abortion can often be traumatic for the mother. Uh, the sudden difference between having a fetus in their body and then losing it the next day can cause uh, mental health issues. And I can say, you're right, but that's nothing compared to the mental health issues of having to raise a child that they don't want for 18 years. So it's correct, but it's not really relevant to what we're talking about. Um, if you do any surgery, there's a possibility of some kind of mental issue. Um, so, you know, that's not really relevant to this particular topic. Um, then, let's see, third level. Uh, let They say, if you allow any woman to have an abortion, then uh, some women will uh, think that uh, they don't have to take responsibility for their own bodies. They don't have to consider the consequences of perhaps becoming pregnant, uh, and that will create a society that is somehow worse because it's like less moral, and um, there will be a higher number of abortions overall. And I can say, sure, but I don't think that's a bad thing because women sh already should have entire 
control over their body and they should be able to say whether they want to keep a baby or not. Like, yes, it would be better to not become pregnant if you don't plan on having a baby. But if you do become pregnant, nobody should stop you from being able to choose whether to actually have the baby. Uh, so more abortions, uh, more free sex for everyone, I don't think is important. It might be correct. It is related to the topic, but it's not important compared to what I'm talking about. That's level three. Level four. Um, this is when somebody might say, but if the total number of abortions goes up and women really don't care about having safe sex anymore, then isn't that creating a culture where it's fine to kill un unborn babies and people think that there's nothing wrong with that, that it's OK? Um, and at this point, uh, I think a logical person would have to agree that um, if OK, so the comparison would be with something like uh, bulimia. Uh, what is the English? Uh, what is the Chinese for this? Anorexia bulimia, uh, eating disorder. So like some people have the mental issue where they want to eat, but they also uh, don't feel like they should eat. And so after eating a lot, they force themselves to throw up. If you do this once or twice, your body is not harmed very seriously. But if this becomes a pattern in your life, then it is a serious problem. So what the other side would be saying is the same thing. One or two abortions, that's fine. But if your preferred method of safe sex is abortions, that could be a problem. And, uh, and at this point, I can say, you know what? You're right. If a woman uses abortions as her main method of preventing pregnancy, that could cause some problems. But, and now I have to draw a bigger picture, right? Compared to what you're trying to do, which is banning uh, most abortions, which one harms women more? Uh, on your side, uh, you're saying that because some women might abuse their right to abortion, we should ban all uh, most abortions. But I think that banning most abortions would actually hurt women more than allowing a few women to abuse their right to abortion. Does that make sense? Do you understand what I'm talking about? So like even if I agree that this might happen, uh, preventing it would sacrifice something even bigger. Uh, okay, another comparison would be with like free speech. Yes, some people will abuse their right to free speech. Some people will go out in the street and try to like uh, say things like uh, uh, death to Jews or, or whatever. But if we start banning uh, free speech that many people disagree with, that hurts the bigger issue of allowing people to say different things to help society improve. So by stopping that, if by preventing that specific harm, you are creating a more general harm. That's the logic that I'm presenting here uh, in this example. By preventing the specific harms of some women abusing their right to abortion, you would be creating a greater harm for most women who are not abusing their right to abortion. Okay, so that was a, that was a complicated topic, um, but you can see how this structure and the structure of the previous three slides does not depend on your topic. It does not depend on which side do you stand. Um, this is a logical structure that can work for any debatable topic. Some topics are not debatable. Um, global warming, it, to me, is not debatable. I Maybe it's my own bias, but I cannot think of an opposing side. What would you say? You don't think there's global warming? Or you think global warming is fine? Uh, I guess because we're all going to Mars. I don't know. Um, yeah, so I'm as your teacher, if you write an essay about global warming, I would not be able to judge the side that is against global warming. I, I wouldn't know how to make sense of that. Um, so 
I would not be able to give you advice and give you a score, so please don't do that. Death penalty. This is not a good topic because uh, in my experience, every time somebody debates the death penalty, the key difference always comes down to specific evidence. We all agree about the values of both sides of this debate. Where we disagree is how does it work in different countries? What are the systems of different countries? Uh, the empirical evidence. Uh, and so if it becomes an argument essay about the evidence, then it, it's a competition between who can find more evidence, this side or the other side. And it again, it's just not a good argument essay. Uh, and then the last topic I don't want you to write about is priority seating. And this is because it goes against. Oh, Mela. it goes against this point. Why is this important? After uh, having some students write about this last year, I realized this topic is not important. Think about this. What is the main difference between having priority seating and not having priority seating? This is a good exercise to think about your argument. If we cancel priority seating, what would happen? Okay, sorry, we should start one step before. We have priority seating. Who uses priority seats? Old people, like disabled people, pregnant people, right? So if we cancel priority seating, what would happen? What would those people do? W would they still need to sit down? Yes, right? So how would they find a seat? They can ask for it or for some people they can like get angry at young people and maybe the young person will give them a seat. Uh, there are also ideas from the government, like if you need a seat, you can get a sticker or something. So the really the main difference between having and not having a priority seat is do you want to force users to ask for it? So if you are against priority seating, you have to say why it's a good idea to make people ask for to ask for seats. I don't think that makes sense. Is there a situation where it would be a, a better to force somebody to ask for a seat? OK, so like say we use the sticker system. If you need a seat, you can get some stickers put them on and people who see your stickers are supposed to give you a seat. But what if they don't? What if they look at your sticker and then ignore you? Then we're back in the same problem, right? Either you ask or you don't ask. Uh, so you can see why this is not really a good ar topic for an argument essay. Um, so, you know, similar things, right? Like, should you kill a baby? Obviously, no, don't write about that. Um, but it, so when you choose a topic, you do have to think, is there uh, two sides to this issue? Can both sides be convincing? Can you imagine a reasonable person supporting the other side? That is a good topic. OK, so that's the argument essay structure. Questions? So um, I said here the third point, other points. According to the argument structure, each argument should go against some point from the other side. So if you can think of even more ideas, but you cannot think of what it goes against, that is what you put in number three. And in that case, you can stuff everything together because you don't have to use space to analyze the other side. You don't have to bring up examples to convince your reader. You can just throw points uh, into that paragraph. OK, so that is the basic structure of an argument. Um, wow, we're almost out of time. That's not good. 
OK, so homework. Go home. Uh, read the next. I already have a handout. Read the next few pages of the handout. Page six is an argument essay written by ChatGPT. Page seven and eight is the human version of the same argument essay. It's not very long. In fact, here's how I asked ChatGPT to write the, the page six version. I looked at the argument essay on pages seven and eight. I analyzed the structure. I brought out what I think are the main points and the main examples. I fed those into ChatGPT and I said, write an argument essay about this issue using this standpoint, using these arguments, using these examples. So in terms of logic, the two essays are exactly the same. But as you read, you will realize that the two essays feel very different. Um, so uh, go home, read these two essays, think about the differences and which one you think is a more convincing argument essay. Uh, yeah, OK, that's it. Questions? All right, so if you received your activity one, activity two essays, please return them to me now and I'll see you next week. <laughs>